The Chosen One of Russia. This video would be better if every time you said power, you had Virgil saying it in its place. Yo! Oh shit, that's f***ing genius, man! Yo, okay, I'm gonna keep this one in mind. Maybe I could do it in the future, who knows. Welcome back to Retrospective, the series where I look back at my old champion analysis videos and respond to the comments. This video will be focusing on my Virgil's inferiority video. Otakamurd, Virgil wants power, but everyone knows the best offense is a good Royal Guard. Bruh, I know the power that's behind Royal Guard, but I cannot work that form for the life of me. I'm a sword and gunslinger user at heart. Fazarino, small weird theory of mine. When Virgil wasn't busy seeking types of power or a motivation. He probably did work in theater or writing. Just look at all of V's taunts, they all have to do with music and dancing, plus the aforementioned literature. I believe Virgil has the same desire to style on people that Dante does. The difference is that Virgil has more of a flair for the dramatic. When Virgil fights, it's like looking at a trained gymnast. The point is not whether he can beat this demon, it's if he can look graceful as he does it. Since V is more open about his interest in the arts, his taunts and movements are all in reference to putting on a performance. And since V is Virgil's humanity personified, I wouldn't say it's too much of a stretch to assume Virgil's style comes from that same interest. The inner performer coming out through killing demons. Virgil is so above these basic bitches, so I can see him trying to make it a little bit more entertaining by making it a performance for himself. In other words, this is how Virgil flexes. Yo, but I totally would love to see the developers make like a video of Virgil doing a little dance number when no one is looking. That could be a great way to advertise that Virgil DLC that's coming, right? Right. Bello D Gaming. Videos like this makes you appreciate the story of Devil May Cry. Most just think it's just a no-nonsense hack and slash game with OP characters but in reality they all have a ton of heart, soul, and humanity in their story. Yeah man. I think the reason why Devil May Cry works so well is that it strikes a balance of endearing character writing and over-the-top action. It knows not to burden the player with a heavy plot, but it also knows its characters well enough to be able to create distinct and believable motivations within them. It's also very unapologetic about being a video game. Like Dunkey said, it's about as video gamey as video games get. It's not afraid to be stupid. Rudolf von Stroheim. Is that a JoJo reference? Virgil becomes the most powerful demon in history. Dante stabs himself. Nero gets a new devil trigger out of nowhere. Virgil, am I a joke to you? What can I say? Guess you weren't as motivated as you thought you were, Virgil. Yami Midna, quote, he was willing to even tear his own son's arm off for power, end quote. To be fair, Virgil didn't know Nero was his son. Doubt it would have stopped him in that moment, but it kind of takes off the edge of this action. Virgil's cold-blooded. Bob Sap Dagger. So Virgil is just an angry child too emotionally immature to accept that he felt weak and scared? Actually, now the ending of DMC5 does make more sense. Okay, just the part where Virgil just goes along with what Nero wants. Nero was very clearly trying to stop the two of them, because he cared about them. Maybe it finally clicked for Virgil that that's why Dante has been fighting him all this time. Because they just want him to take a fuck chill pill. <laughs> that last line was such a good way to put it. Yeah, the only thing is that I'd say Dante gave up on trying to reason with his brother back in Devil May Cry 3. Maybe seeing two descendants of Sparta risk their lives to stop him really was a wake-up call that he needed. Joshua Gutierrez. I see Azura in that thought group. I think not. So he's referring to one of my all-time favorite editing moments in my YouTube career when I got a bunch of other Capcom characters and made Virgil yell square up thoughts to them. <laughs> I'll admit Asura is pretty beast though, so if we had to take this image seriously, he's probably the only one there that can rock Virgil. Let's get this argument started in the comments below, because I clearly feed on discourse. Kayam Charif, footage from Dongari 990 
That guy is a DMC god. Yeah, I don't understand how it's humanely possible to do the combinations he does while only having 10 human fingers. It's crazy that he's made a name for himself from just being really good at Devil May Cry. He's still making videos too, go check that shit out, it's genuinely impressive. Num, Jeez, wow, okay, you wrote a master's thesis on this video game. Much like me with all my videos if you think about it, so I commend you. <sighs> Something to add, when Virgil was attacked as a child, it was his devil trigger which saved him, which I don't think it's hard to argue that that solidified a notion of the demons keep me safe as a sort of emotional shield or crutch, as it wasn't other people or Dante or his mother which saved him, it was himself, and only a part of himself which allowed him to survive. If only he had control of it sooner, he could have protected them as well. Reading deeply into the DMC3 line, foolishness Dante, foolishness, might controls everything and without strength you cannot protect anything, let alone yourself, develops, to me, Virgil's hierarchy of needs, which I believe holds true for DMC5. Virgil's mother died because he wasn't strong. He was a liability that caused his own traumatic childhood in his mind. So, if you are stronger still, you can protect others from a situation of even being presented the choices of suffering on your behalf, culminating in, if I'm strong enough, an emotional bond can never cause pain. In my mind, a crystalline coping mechanism writ large. For Virgil, I never got the notion that he wanted power for power's sake, even in a sense of satisfying a complex. What I think he wants is control. It just happens that power allows a lot of control. Control is also all over Virgil's mannerisms, speech patterns, posture, fighting style, hairstyle, even the written word is a far more controlled method of expression. He values control, the concept of control, and consciously or otherwise displays control. To him, power is the currency of control, not the other way around, as he never revels in the display of power, nor in the feeling of it, unlike Arkham. Fast forward to DMC5, we have a Virgil who clearly has power but is losing control, easily tossing and ripping Nero's arm off, but also degrading rapidly. He doesn't have the strength to protect himself, he's back at the base of his hierarchy of needs. So in order to regain control, he gains power. And it seems like he knew the full plan prior to separation. Human form will buy time while the demon gains strength, to then rejoin at a later time. Once Virgil is in control of himself again, he takes no issue with destroying the very thing which granted him power. Given how V had the memories, but not Yorizin, strikes me as a very specific point in his psychology, that his humanity is in control, always. If demon and human size were unified, one would expect both to consciously have some memories, but this is not the case as is seen in the eating of the fruit scene. The fruit seemed to create an illusion of the setting which is the purpose of gaining power, Virgil's childhood home, power to protect, but Yorizin wasn't conscious of it. To speculate further, this tells us that Virgil treats his demonhood as a tool, and nothing more, to protect his humanity and what he values. On the surface, one can say Virgil's humanity is weak and his demonic side is more of what Virgil is, but I think that's incorrect. I think V is so frail because Virgil is overly protective of his humanity. He's never wanting to risk it. Instead, he keeps his demon side at arm's length controlled and develops that to protect himself. Edit. To add, I think the reason we see him grow as a character by reflecting on top of the tree is that his humanity finally had its own experience and growth on its own, without relying on the demon side to handle or shield him. He took a walk outside of his shell. <sighs> I agree with your idea of Virgil wanting control over his life. To feel that we have control over our lives is a natural need us humans have, even as early as childhood. It's actually one of the reasons why children may smear their poop on walls when they become really anxious. It provides a sense of control over their actions and environment. I'm not saying this to suggest that Virgil is throwing his shit on walls, I'm just emphasizing how early that need for control can exist. So I can fully agree with what you're saying when you bring up how his demonic power grants him a feeling of control over his life that, as a helpless child, in the face of demons, he quite simply didn't have. I especially love how you brought up that need for control being expressed through minor things in his character too. His appearance, the way he speaks, his mannerisms, his fighting style. Which really becomes apparent when you compare it to Dante, who just lets his imagination run wild with his fighting style. Meanwhile, Virgil's is formal and focused. I really enjoyed reading this one. Thank you for the comment. Mark Sola Ramos A job well done indeed. However, if I may add a peace of mind regarding Virgil. Oh wait, this one's gonna be long too. <gasps> I strongly believe he loved Dante in a weird way. He does not only view him as an obstacle, but also part of what he wants to protect. The day of the trauma, he experienced the helplessness of feeling he lost everything due to his lack of power, and he seeks to feel in complete control so as to never again having to suffer that kind of pain that comes from the loss of loved ones. Also, although he made questionable things, he doesn't hate humanity either. I believe because he had a son with a human and had the chance to kill Lady in DMC3 at the library, which he could have done easily. Yeah, he just ignored her, even though he clearly knew she was there, and she had kind of fucked up his plan in that moment of the plot to some extent. On top of that, the day of the trauma, he felt 
abandoned by his mom, whom he clearly cared a lot. Overall, I've always perceived him as someone who just wants to feel in complete control of his life to be able to protect what and who he feels dear to him. He's really relatable to me regarding the control aspect because I struggled with depression or maybe I was close to depression in the past due to things that had not been turning out the way I expected in life after putting effort into them, which led me to feel powerless and to feel I needed to find a way to control my life, when in reality, what I needed to do was come to terms with the lack of control one has in life regarding those things, and try to better myself to overcome the helplessness. <sighs> Hey, you're not alone in thinking Virgil wants control above all else. Thing is, I don't think he hates all of humanity either, but I do believe he's indifferent to humanity. Let's remember that he was willing to sever the barrier between the human world and the demon world. This would have allowed demons to flood the human world and wreak havoc, and he knew that. Nonetheless, he wanted his father's power. This is why I say he's indifferent to humanity. Humanity's destruction by demons was just collateral to him. I believe this is still in line with his character, too. Virgil's desire for control is destructive in the same way that our own mental struggles can be destructive when we're not mindful of them. We can contribute to the destruction of our relationships with others, or in our pursuit of control, we end up causing harm to ourselves. Also, thank you for sharing that bit about your own mental health journey. I do encourage people to feel comfortable about sharing those experiences here on this channel. You know, with the focus of this channel being psychology. And those were some of the glorious comments you left me in my Virgil analysis. I hope you enjoyed seeing what our community had to say about the video. I'll see you guys in the next one. And as always, my people, thank you for watching.